So I'm pulling out the shake goods. So I've got some pumpkin puree in a pan, in a, in a pan, in a can. I feel like I, now we should do Dr. Seuss rhyming things. Um, I like my spooky bread baskets. Can you guys see them? Ooh. Um, we, have, we have 15 bins of Halloween stuff, you guys. So I have about a quarter and a cup, a, one and a quarter cup of water in there. So in making these, this, this is the base of my ice creamless shakes. So I know some of you have had them in other ways. So this was the beginning of it. So what we're going to do is we make our own plant milk. Then we're going to use either some ground chia seeds. And like by ground, I mean you ground them in a grinder, not you bought the ground chia seeds. Let me see if I can give you a... So you see, like really ground, as ground as you can get them. That or you can use some xanthan gum. Some people don't like xanthan gum or some people's digestion systems don't like xanthan gum. Xanthan gum seems like an expensive ingredient, but I've probably paid $12 for this and I've been using it for seven years. That's how much I've used in like seven years. So if this is something you like and you're okay, like it's in a lot of things as a thickener. So what it does is it helps thicken, it also helps bring that ice and milk and yumminess together, right? Because when we use ice cream, or if you're making a margarita, you got some other things at play. When we're putting plant-based milk that we're making with ice, just like Starbucks Frappuccino, we have to get something to get it to come together and be friends and make our milkshake the way we want it to. And so we'll do one We'll do one as it said to begin with, and then we'll talk through the other one. We'll see where our gumbo is. So I'm going to go ahead and add for those of you who may be new to me, I make a lot of my own spice blends, as you've seen today. So I recommend getting like a little spice grinder. You can go to Amazon and there's some that have two grinders so that you can have one for coffee or other things and one for spices. If you have a coffee grinder at home now, you can grind some white rice. You probably could do brown rice too. I think white rice absorbs a little bit more since it doesn't have the fiber. Grind some white rice to get some of the coffee out of it. Grind your spice, hopefully not too pungent. Chia seeds should be fine. Then grind some more white rice and then you can, your significant other should never know that you used the coffee grinder for something it wasn't supposed to be used for. And then if you get, really into making spice blends and things like I have. I don't know, for like 20, 30 bucks, you can get one. I do some crazy things um, with spices and grinding things. So I actually got um, a spice grinder attachment for my Ninja. This is my Vitamix out today. But, um, and I really like it for grinding fresh chili powder. It, it's got a little more powered behind it than most grinders do because something like chilies or some other things you might dehydrate may not be quite as crispy as coffee beans already are. So that's the only reason why. Okay, so here's some pecans. We're going to make pecan milk. So you're allergic to pecans. You don't eat nuts. Any of those things. You can go ahead and use rolled oats instead and it'll be great. You could also skip all this making the milk thing and pour pre-made milk from your fridge in, right? Um, I like to do this, and, and we don't do the pecans as much. It's more of a treat, and it's Halloween, so we should be treaty, is my opinion of that. Um, but what the oats, I just make it with oats. So, like, I make these a lot for, for us. I'll put some water in, some oats make the milk, put a sweetener in. And speaking of sweetener, I'll have to get my maple syrup. But you could use dates, date syrup, date sugar. You could use stevia. You could use monk fruit. You could use whatever sweeteners are about to be discovered the moment after we go off air today. Any sweetener that makes you happy, you can use in this, okay? So this time I'm going to put in about a cup of pecans which is probably a little more than a cup of pecans. And I'm going to um, open up and we're going to put about a quarter cup of pumpkin puree. Ah, 
I got it out for myself already. Look at me being all helpful. And some people get angry when we don't use the whole can of pumpkin at once. So let's talk about some things we can do with this pumpkin before I get hate mail. Um, honestly, if I had two tablespoons of this left, I could throw it in my gumbo. Right? I could throw it in a soup or stew. I could put it in some oatmeal. I could um, go ahead and freeze some of it. I could freeze it in um, little ice cube trays, and then when I make my oatmeal earlier for another morning, I could go ahead and add some of that in. But I love pumpkin. That's how much I love pumpkin, a little extra. And then maybe it'll not come together exactly the same way as the recipe, and that's awesome. Okay, so we've got, some... let's start pureeing this together. Max says hello. always when you're making a milk or anything else you're gonna to have to scrape things down and I think I need more water so I'm not happy this is like a little ridiculously thick but you could also make this as an ice cream base by the way <laughs> okay so this doesn't taste like a whole I mean it tastes delicious it doesn't taste sweet but you get a little hint of the pumpkin and the pecans Oh my God, the pecans are that warm, dark fall flavor. You know, it's earthy and just, and also pecans, much like cashews, are a softer nut. And actually pecans are so soft, you don't even have to soak them. But you could soak them if you wanted to and probably make a softer milk. When I'm making these ice cream list milkshakes, I never strain it. So like maybe if I did almonds, which I haven't done before, I would want to strain it. But usually I use pecans or cashews and walnuts would be the same way. Walnuts would be really easy. But yeah, this consistency of this is thick like ice cream. I'm going to go ahead and just put in about maple syrup to taste, probably about two tablespoons. And we'll keep all this to the side. Um, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mix all this stuff up together. I'm gonna to put the xanthan gum in last. And I may still need a little bit more water, honestly. I'm gonna put a half teaspoon of cardamom in there because I love, love cardamom. I think it's the best dessert and most underutilized dessert ingredient. We're gonna put about a quarter teaspoon of allspice. Do you notice I'm checking to make sure that I'm guessing, right? But here's the thing, you could put all these spices in a little jar or a little, um, a little cup, smell them until they smell really yummy to you. We're gonna do just a pinch of cloves. And if your cloves are really fresh, you wanna do a small pinch because fresh cloves are both wonderful and horrible all at the same time. They're delicious. And we're gonna put about one and a half teaspoons of this in. And since it's a quarter teaspoon, I'm kind of like winging it. Let's see. I think I'm going to put a little bit more water in there. Let's whirl this together. So I'm going to taste this. I'm pretty satisfied with that. At this point, because we're going to put ice in here, it's okay if it's a little extra sweet, but not coiling sweet, you know, not like, Wah. it's also okay if um, the cinnamon or the cardamom, I think I'm actually going to put a little bit more cloves in here. I am shocked, but it must be long enough that this isn't as fresh as it was before. 
So you can adjust these seasonings. And I am going to put like an eighth of a teaspoon of xanthan gum. So it, it is a tiny, tiny amount. And I'm going to sprinkle it because sometimes it likes to just get all up on the side and gum up over there. Okay. And you'll be better off watching from the side. Okay. So I'm going to start this off a little slow. There we go. And if you put more xanthan gum in and do on anything, even a milk, it is going to thicken it. But at some point, it's, it feels weird. So you don't want it to feel too thick. So now, and I think I say to use about one to two cups crushed ice. I have crushed ice in my refrigerator door. So that's why I'm going here. You could use small ice cubes. Crushed ice is going to be easier on your blender than Vitamix can do cubes. But, you know, I paid a lot of money. I'd like it to last a long time. Okay, so what I usually do, and I'll just kind of show you so you can get an idea, because it's hard to measure this. It's going to depend on how thick things are. There we go. So see, I've got it in there, and I kind of shake it back and forth. See, that still seems a little liquidy to me. I know how thick I want this. So I'm going to go get some more ice. OK. And see, that, see how I can kind of see some of the little icebergs in there? That tells me it's probably thick enough. And so when you're doing this ice thing, it's nice if you do it low for a little bit, like medium low, and then before you get it going, because what happens is it breaks it up into smaller and smaller pieces. So if you just go really high, it's just not as good. And you can So I'm watching to see if the pieces of ice are broken up. And I may need more ice. And when you're on high, you have to kind of like do a little dance. If you want it to be really smooth, but if you keep it on high too long, it's actually going to heat up and melt the ice. Okay. Let me let you see this. It's pretty thick. It's the right amount of xanthan gum because it doesn't feel weird or gooey. I'm going to put just a little more ice in here because I like them extra, extra, extra thick. But I'm putting in a little less than I did the first two times. Okay. And the pecan pumpkin combo is really amazing. And you guys. Do you guys see how when it's, you can see that it slows down and it kind of looks almost more like an ice cream churn even? Let's unveil this puppy. There we go. And you see how it just looks thicker. Oh my God, it's so good. I wish I could hand out samples. Okay, let me grab some cups because Cheryl needs one. And also you'll be able to see when I pour it. 
and I can pour it one from each direction so you can see what you're getting yourself into. So you can make less than this too. You see how thick? Hear it? And I probably could have blended it a little bit more. You can see a couple of little ice chunks in there. Let's do it this way so you can see it from this side too. And don't waste a drop of it. Oh. So if you don't like maple syrup, soak some dates and puree dates while you're making the milk. And you can do that with making milk and not even making the ice creamless milkshake. But this, you gotta have. Um, and this would taste just as good without the pecans and using oats instead. If you wanted to be super fancy, because I know you do, I would suggest that maybe toast your oats first. 